You're welcome yet again to another wonderful edition of your program, Business Matters. My name is Stephen Ipalubo Lawson. In the world of waste management, we know that some people consider it to be a source of wealth. How well are we maximize that source? It's a big question that calls for an answer. Let us have a business update. As is our culture on business matters, we invite a distinguished guest to join us in the studio to explore the topic of the day. My guest is a distinguished professional with experience spanning funds management, compliance and risk management, client relationship management, and customer experience in the financial and oil and gas sectors in Nigeria and the United States. She's also a social entrepreneur dedicated to saving our world and empowering the disenfranchised, especially women and street children, through the waste to wealth model helping solve a problem by reducing the high level of non-biodegradable wastes. A highly motivated individual with strong interpersonal communication and leadership skills, she is the author of the book Beyond Me. She's obviously now the new public relations officer of the Recyclers Association of Nigeria. I'm talking about no other person than the founder and CEO of um, Las Gidi Recyclers. Let's welcome Lolo Idu Okehahi Alam as we explore the topic Waste management, key to sustainable development. You're welcome, madam. Thank you. I'm always excited when I see you. I think the trade you are involved with has to do with a lot of green cop captions. And you're looking lovely green. I was, I was deliberate in my choice of person. So you know, I mean, green. green is a color that depicts um, going, uh, green, going green, sustainability. depicts sustainability, depicts effective waste management, depicts so much about the world and the earth needing to make sure that we who dwell in her have to change our lifestyle. Yeah, right. I mean, in Nigeria, Lagos, for example, do you see the amount of waste that is being generated? Let us even start that convers this conversation by saying that. And it looks like uh, the system system in Lagos is, um, is lacking in dealing with the waste collection and the waste disposal, as the case might be. You're driving down the roads this now and then, and you see, you know, buckets of waste piled up from the gutters and the rest of that. When you see all of this, how does it make you feel? So interestingly, that was how Las Guinness Recyclers was bettered. So um, I used to live in Ikate, Legushi. Um, one morning after the rain in the night, I took a walk, and as I was walking on the streets, the, it was like the plastics were calling me to, to <laughs> save them. And that was how the business idea came into um, mind. Um, um, Lagos State is doing a lot on uh, managing the waste, but I think they're really overwhelmed. If you consider mm. the number of people in Lagos and the number of the, the quantity used, I think the major problem now is to enlighten the people on proper disposal of waste. That's the biggest problem we have right now. As a matter of fact, I think you've actually um, um, jumped the gun, so to speak, before myself, because I was going to ask you a question that has to do with the role of education and awareness yes. in helping people have a you know, very good sense of waste management. Obviously, you've mentioned that. But I think there's not been enough campaigns in that regard. Um, it's because nobody's thinking of spending their own money. Mm. So maybe Loma could channel a lot of resources to just enlightenment on proper disposal of waste. 
if you recall a few weeks ago, there was a ban on sterile, those are... Yes, those, those um, um, takeaway and, packs. And when yeah. I read it, I'm like, that's not the way to go. The way okay. to go is to educate people on proper disposal. There are companies there willing to buy those things back and reproduce them. So why can't we find a way to encourage people that like collection, like play in the collection space? So um, encourage people to dispose responsibly, put waste bins in strategic places. Because if you could drive around or walk around Lagos, you find out that there are no waste bins. There are actually no so waste bins. So people actually bins. steal them if you put them there. Wonderful. One time we bought baskets and gave out and they took them home. So it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible what's happening in our world. Well, I do. You know, sometime in the 80s, we used to have this, uh, uh, the waste, uh, the big waste oh, yes. silos. Uh, yeah, that the, the big like truck, silo. Yes, yeah, silo that yes. comes in, and then, you know, yeah. as a matter of fact, when we were younger, when we were kids there, we actually come out and watch all we of those theatrics, you know, yes. where it comes from. So what happens to that? So just like the governments keep changing, Everybody's coming up with their new um, agenda, so that's a problem. So, um, like I live in an estate, so it's mandatory that you must have a waste bin. They have specifics that you must buy. So I think people need to learn to dispose of their waste responsibly. It can't be only the government doing it. It's no, I agree with you. It, it's a responsibility that every other like, person, I including self regulation. Great. I guess it's from my years as compliance officer. Officer, yeah. So. I mean, you've you've you're a pension guru, as a matter of fact, and you've played in that space quite a while. And we hope in the future we're going to have to tap into your intellectual, you know, repository when the time comes in. But I mean, if you look at the comparative sense, in the United States of America, we still have proper waste management system. But right here in Africa, we don't seem to be bothered. Is it because we do not see it as a money-making venture or we feel that it's something that is one of the benefits of being a citizen of the country? So interestingly, um, American and Nigerian. I lived in the US and I carried my bag and came back to Nigeria. So the major difference I'll tell you is that in America, it's self-service. So when I'm going to the shop in America, I carry my um, cans and plastics and I go to the supermarket, they're vending machines, so you put them in the vending machines, it spits out a ticket for you, you go to the cashier and they give you your cash. When in Nigeria we're set up differently, there are house helps everywhere. So even when the owner of the house tells a house help to separate the waste, and when you tell them how much the value they're going to get from separating the waste, they'd rather throw it away than take the little money you're giving, the token you're giving them. So we're being creative in Nigeria now, we're trying to offer house helps health insurance to say if you're able to pick up a certain volume of waste, we can give you health insurance. Guess what? Most of the high turnover rates in the house helps too. By the time you come on the next visit, the person does not work there anymore. Oh my. So it's a big challenge. Uh, uh, but most people, most recyclers in Nigeria have found a niche in it in collections. Like I, I only do collections. Okay, let's, let's look at the, uh, the, the connection between waste management and the sustainable development goals. Yeah. Do we see that nexus? And would that actually help us as a country, as a society, to actually meet some aspect of the SDGs? It is actually huge. I think up to four of those goals tied wow. to waste management. And wow. we can't take that for granted. Wow. And there are lots of funds out there, but they want to see what you're doing to be able to, I mean, United Nations and all across the world, there are lots of funds to support this circular economy we're talking about and um, recycling. But they want you to take those baby steps, invest in it. Like um, a few weeks ago, I had a program in, in Lekki, Admiralty. I'm trying to get 100 pickers out of those scavengers you see on the street. And I don't like to call them scavengers, but um, there's no better word for them. Well, maybe so you I'm have to create one. I call them pickers. <laughs> pickers, better. So I call them pickers. I, I get them off of the streets. I give them T-shirts. And now I want to include f uh, feeding for them. So for every day you come and sell your waste to us, we give you feed you at least a meal a day. That's mm -hmm. a new initiative we're working on, mm -hmm. just to encourage them. But these people will go, to, if someone gives them 10 naira more, they're not loyal to you. They <laughs> <laughs> so it's very difficult uh, managing these speakers. Like no, but when you look at the scene which Nigeria is and Lagos is, we, we realize that even in our schools, we don't seem to be able to teach those students how to, you know, separate, you know, well, their, their, can't the, the government, for example, put it as a law you know, so legislate it where recycling has to be part of the syllabus. And every school, for example, if you're catching them young, actually implement such policies. 
I doubt if the government is uh, fixated on that. What most recyclers are doing are now going by themselves to the schools to create programs for the schools because you know they're under age, so you can't pay them. So okay. you have to find incentives. So okay. they're having a fun day, you sponsor it. But you teach them to, whenever they, they use these things at home, they shouldn't put them in regular ways and bring them to school. Yeah, but why does it seem as if, you know, this task that is so critical in helping us achieve developmental goals is not taking, you know, charge from a level of, you know, policy as the case might be? Because if we have to only just rely only on uh, recyclers to do what we believe the society at large should do as part of their lifestyle, do you think we'll be able to address this issue of waste management in our country? Not necessarily. The only reason I gave you an example of the um, of the banned um, yes, takeaway parks. Yes, takeaway parks. Yeah. And for me, that's not the that shouldn't be the way forward. The way forward will be if you use these things, make sure you put them in a bin, and somebody comes and cuts them away. True. You know? True. So just like the children, if you teach the children from an early stage that at home, when you drink water or drink a soda, don't throw it into the regular bin. Put it in a bag. There's a bag in the kitchen, and they'll do it. I know children are the easiest people yeah, to... Impressionable, um, as a matter of fact. But when we look at waste management in Nigeria, we know that there are different kinds of waste. I mean, some people talk about the medical waste, some people look at the electronic waste, yes. some people talk about residential or household waste, as the case might be. Yes. How well are we doing when it comes to the issue of medical waste as well as uh, electronic waste? So that's... I, I, I spoke to a lady that lives in Ibadan that is hoping to get into the e-waste, and it's not, most people don't find that attractive. Why is that so? Because it's, I think it's more complicated. Like, we have never done e-waste. I focus more on the homes. So I do pet plastics, I do aluminium, I do cartons and stuff. And if you um, think of the way of the future, I think everybody should find a niche. You can't, you can't do all. No, not at all. If you do yeah. all, you're going to get burnt. So True. that's literally what it is. Sure. So it's for someone to do the research and find which area of recycling that is interest that is interesting to you and you and you follow it. People have made the case or have made so much campaign in terms of waste to wealth, and yet that opportunities don't seem to have a lot of players. Uh, what are the challenges, as a matter of fact, if you are supposed to rule out a waste to wealth kind of enterprises? What does it entail to actually kick off one? So I'm a, big, I'm a big advocate for waste to wealth. Great. If you see my proposals to um, companies, that's the first thing I put in on um, preaching the waste to wealth. So um, I'd mentioned that we, we ran a campaign recently. So what we're doing is going to supermarkets, we're going to um, lounges, restaurants, and preaching to the people to say, these your cleaners can actually um, collect this waste and we come and pay them. We come okay. and pick I'm going to ask you to pause a moment. We're going to go on a short break. As soon as we're back, we'll continue with the conversation of waste to wealth. You're welcome back. If you've just joined us, we're in the studio, and of course, I'm listening to Madam Lolo Idu, and we're exploring the topic waste management as a way to help us achieve our sustainable development goals. Before we went to the break, we have looked at waste to wealth. And yes, Madam, we're looking at some of those stems and what it actually takes to be able to um, um, build a waste to wealth enterprise. And you were actually explaining yeah. before we went on the short break. Yes, um, so. My, I preach the waste to wealth model. I preach it to widows. I preach it to people that work in supermarkets, cleaners. I preach it to the street boys, the pickers, to say, for every waste you see there, there's a value. Um, most of the items you see, like the pet plastics, they call them ragolis, they have a value. Currently, 100 naira per kg. The cans, if you notice, if you go to a party, before you finish drinking, someone has grabbed your can. Grab the cans. Uh, for the pickers, they can get as high as 500 naira per kg for the cans. Then the um, cartons. Per kg? How, how many cans will actually make you up have, a kg? And the uh, manufacturers have actually reduced the volume of the... Uh, okay. Originally, if you think of it, if you think of a bottle of water, now it's even difficult to open it because they've reduced it so much that... <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's more work for the pickers. And, it's because it's it's cost of production. I mean, yes. everybody's trying to economic of scale. Well, it's part of what um, making it sustainable because if you think of the old bottles, they were quite thick. Yes. And it was yes. wasteful. 
Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, but are, are we not concerned about the fact that uh, a lot of these uh, pet bottles, especially the waters, as the as the case might be, uh, we've seen them littering the waterways and all that. Uh, the companies themselves don't seem to be, you know, uh, zero plastic campaign. I know it's ongoing as the case might be, but we don't seem to be making a headway in that area at all. So the manufacturers are doing a lot. Um, they, they have an association now for all the manufacturers, like they call FIBRA, F-B-R-A, and they're dedicated to buying back. Okay. So now we're okay. looking for collectors. Okay, great. And our, the point is that they want to get it at source. They, we don't want the, the, the uh, plastics to get into the dustbin. Okay. So we want okay. to give you bags for you to separate them at home. So at home, the, at so parties, food, at event food centers. Quality. There are different qualities of waste. The waste that they get in the, in the dump sites cannot be recycled for food. Think of it. Okay. Well, if you have collected a whole, like me, I, I ded I'm dedicated to going to homes, estates, shops, lounges, restaurants to pick up. No, so when you collect the waste, you're talking about the waste such as the... Uh, pet plastics. Pet plastics, like for the bottle water. Yes. And then the... Nylons. You see those wrappers they used to wrap the bottle when you want to buy a carton of water. Those yes, wrappers, yes. They are reusable too. They are reusable as oh, well. Yes. Okay. That's what they used to make polythene bags. Fantastic. Yes. Okay. What other things are reusable? I mean, uh, uh, broken uh, board, but broken chairs, plastic chairs, okay. those tables. Are okay. Reusable. So obviously, for for somebody going into the waste to wealth business, even as a collector, yes. all of that is what forms the 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 kg with which you are oh, yes. able to measure and of course, you know, get that out as and a case. And there are lots of optickers. The optickers are the people that have manufacturing companies that are now proper doing the proper rec uh, recycling. But you know, why we call ourselves rec recyclers is that there are literally five steps to recycling. Okay. The collection is the most important. Okay. Because if you don't collect it at source, then what are you going to recycle? Okay. What are the other steps? So you take it to your, your, your dump site and it's sorted because you don't mix two types of waste. Even in a plastic bottle, there are three types of plastics on it. This the cover, us, yeah. the cover is different. It's a different kind of plastic. plastic that's true. The body is a different kind. And that wrap around it is different. And you must separate all three. Some people are using the caps to do different things while they're using the bottle to do different, you know? So even the wrap itself, I mean, where you put the brand name, yes, is that what you mean? Kind of, uh, okay. it's a different kind of uh, plastics. So. Okay, okay. And okay. You don't, but all three don't mix up together. Okay, yes. so what's the other step? For the then, so for me, where mine will stop will be in the bailing of it. Bailing okay. will be compacting it, so it's easy to transport. Yeah, but for, for you to be able to do that, there should be machineries as well there, for that There's guy. a bailing machine that is not, is not cheap. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, so so perhaps that's, but, but that's perhaps why you don't seem to have a lot of collectors, don't you think? Because, I mean, except you're saying that you can actually be a collector and then take it to the dump site. No, you have then, to have your own... Is your collection site like your dump site? It's okay. not the one of the government. Oh, okay. It's okay. one in your in your you in your just, own location, location or whatever yeah. it is. All right. Yes. So after that, you're not sent to then the then the you optic deliver to them. The okay. Optics take it and they do the washing and the crushing and either palletizing or putting them in granules. So they're different. Uh, uh, some people expect them to be just crushed. When they okay. crush, you wash it. It comes out like a long thread. Then they cut them up. Those are the pellets. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. And that's what they used to so now, manufacture, exactly. you know, as exactly. the case may be. Yeah. So, in other words, are there not grants for people who might be interested in being recyclers? People who might be interested in being, I mean, playing the kind of role that you play, as a matter of fact, because it, this sounds like you rightly mentioned. Some of these machineries are quite, you know, uh, are quite hefty in terms of um, funds and capital, as the case. Oh, yeah, is. there are grants out there, but they want to, they want you to put your skin in the game. Don't we have grants? grant-giving bodies that are like indigenous. Why does it look as if all the grants have to be outside? Most of the grants are foreign. The international agencies are out there. There are lots of funds, but they want to see what you have done. That's okay. why most people, you have so to So how, how long is a duration that is going to give you at least a way into the door? Five years, so ten years? Two, three years, because most times they're asking for your three years financials to see what you've been doing. So that qualifies you. So it's like the chicken and egg approach, that's what I see. So how do you exist for three years and you're <laughs> struggling then? So it's so some you apply for some grants, they'll ask you, have you ever received a grant before? And if you say no, then you don't qualify. 
One duffel. So it's it's interesting. <laughs> anyway, so right now, in your own mind, uh, how many collectors or recyclers do you think we have in Nigeria? Are, are they enough to be able to bridge the gap? The, um, we had a we had our first um, conference in Abuja two, three weeks ago, and we have an association with over two hundred members. No, that's quite f that's quite Nigeria. few. Yeah, that's quite few. And most people don't know of us, so we've been trying to. Um, after the conference, we noticed that a lot of people are asking questions, wanting to be part of it. Yeah, it's important because, I mean, this kinds of awareness will actually help. And as a way to just put it on record, uh, it's here from, the, uh, from a website, from the UNNES website. It says that in accordance with the theme of the National Waste Day 2024, which is deal with waste in a productive way. Yeah. And I think we have one that is a journey to a zero waste future. Lagos State is working on something for 2024. Okay. They want to use Lekki as a test run. They want to have a, they say it's waste free city. Wow. So wow, that's commendable. Huge. Loma is still working behind the scenes in collaboration. Waste free with, city. With the oh, producers. they have my, my tumble because oh, yeah. we need to be able to have a city that is so waste free. So we're waiting for them to um, share with you. Luckily for me, uh, um, I operate out of Lekki. So okay, yes, to be one a, of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you see, the, the interesting thing is that when you get to some states, yes. you hardly see debris or waste on the floor. You know, uh, uh, is that not something that has to do with uh, uh, the lifestyle of the people itself? So I've traveled quite around Nigeria, and the only states that, the only other place apart from Lagos that I can say they're doing a lot for this is Abuja, the federal capital territory. Okay. So the, my last visit, I felt I was in South Africa. It's really? It's clean, and um, there are lots of recyclers in Abuja too. So they're doing their job and doing it well. Oh, fantastic! But I think fantastic. Lagos is overwhelming. Loma, with all they're doing, is like like they're not doing. No, but I mean, you have a population of over twenty something million. Yes. Honestly speaking, I went, to, I traveled to Port Harcourt of recent. And I was having a discussion with somebody, and we're like, what's the population of uh, Port Harcourt or River State, as a matter of fact? I don't think the whole of River State is up to 10 million. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Up to even 8 million. And then you say, then I said, listen, you know, you can't complain about Lagos anymore because, <laughs> because Lagos, people are just trooping in and trooping out, yeah. and you have, I, I can be, I can, I can say, I mean, I mean, I stand corrected that the population in Lagos should be almost 30 million. I'm sure. You know, because you, can, there are no spaces and for people. People are still migrating. And people are still migrating into Lagos, as a matter of fact. Yeah. But lastly, looking at the issue of the future. What recommendations can you give, especially to government, especially to business, as well as individuals? Do we look at the policy angle? Do we look at alliances and collaboration to make sure that waste management becomes an effective part of our life in order for us to be able to have better environment? Because if the environment is, is free of waste, yes. the air is cleaner, you breathe better, your health and well-being is actually, you know, on a rise. Uh, so what are your recommendations to government, business, as well as individuals? So my first recommendation is to preach the secular economy, which is the way of the future. And the secular economy is just being deliberate in creating, finding avenues to use what you have used before to make new things. Like um, a few months ago, I was listening to the news and I found out that 90% of the papers we use in Nigeria are imported. Wow. So what are we doing with all the waste paper we're getting? So. A paper mill would be very appropriate. I went to Lebanon on a trip and I visited where they do waste to energy. So it's a dump site. They, they dump all the waste into the um, incinerator and it burns it and it combusts and it, it produces energy, power, and they sell it to the government who in turn distributes to the people. Wow. So there are different things we could do with um, through the circular economy and there are lots of funds to support that. But like you have to take the baby steps. So the government, the most they can do is to support anybody that comes up with a proposal to say, I want to set up a paper mill. Give them land for free. Make the policies easier for them to get um, their whatever certification that is required and stuff. So these are basic things that the government can do. And like you said earlier, proper enlightenment on disposal of waste. You could never stop um, at that. 
All right. I want to say a big thank you, madam, for being a guest as always. Like I said, we are going to look forward to having you on a different subject matter entirely because uh, we can't have a pension guru who is also a waste management expert and not tap into, you know, our, our wealth of experience. It's I want to say, my pleasure. It, it will be a great wonder. I'm very sure my director and producer is hearing that. Please make sure you extend that invitation to her so that we can explore the world of pension and uh, it's, it's a whole value chain in that space. As a matter of fact, I want to say a big thank you for being our guest again, as always, and uh, we look forward to. to engaging with you again in the future by God's Thank grace. You. All right. Viewers, please stay tuned. Business Matters continues after this break. heard it all on business matters. Waste management, as a matter of fact, waste to wealth is a way we should explore. Our guest has actually opened up an opportunity, especially in the paper mill sector. The government needs to be able to look at that area and see exactly how we can leverage and capitalize on all of these resources that we have within our environment. Waste is a way for us to be able to get out of the poverty, you know, quagmire that we find ourselves. If we're able to develop an economy which is focused on secularity of it all, we can be rest assured that we can take as many people as we can out of the poverty base. My name is Stephen Ipalbo Lawson. There's so much we can bring to you on this week's edition of the program. Until we meet again, bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.